Those are sweetened with corn syrup. Howdy, Noah here for another little cheeky episode of Wine for the People. And this is something that I don't think we've ever done. We've kind of talked about what wines we're buying, what wines we're drinking, what wines we're really excited by at the moment, but not really any of the wines that we've bought. We do this show where we blind review all these wines. We tell you how much we'd pay for each bottle and how many we'd buy. But we've never actually proved that we've actually gone out and bought some wines. What I'm going to run through now, actually, is wines that have actually gone out and parted with my own hard-earned cash and put in my own little cellar. So this is a little bit of a what's in my cellar kind of situation. So if you're not aware, I've actually moved to Melbourne um, after growing up and living in Adelaide for the last 25 or so years. Well, my partner's doing a PhD here and I'm still working with Unico but being based here in Melbourne is that I've got a whole range and a whole suite of different wine regions that I haven't really explored very much before. And one where I had actually never been to before, um, but it's a very well regarded region in Australia is the Mornington Peninsula. Probably a bit of a good snapshot of some of the great producers, both you know well established and well known, and also a few up and comers as well. So let's start off with a bit of an icon of the region, which is Yabby Lake. So the vineyard's been going since 1998, which, you know, pretty relatively young in the context of the world of wine in Australia. That's pretty heritage listed. Um, but over the last 20 to 30 years now, they've become pretty much the like standard bearer of the region. If you, I've always one of my favorite things whenever you go to a wine region where you've never been to before, go to a iconic producer and get the lay of the land. You don't necessarily need to go to the cool, hip, young producer first. I think it's always good to get that kind of like anchor and that north star of the region and Yabby Lake is definitely one of those and we went there and tried all the wines and they're really fantastic uh, but one we picked up uh, was the Red Claw Chardonnay so this is actually really good value this is about 30 bucks maybe a little bit less maybe even 28 dollars or something like that really simple little Mornington Peninsula Chardonnay 2023 uh, not too much oak use here pretty restrained um, but just a very very easy breezy simple fun Chardonnay we also bought one of their little single vineyard Pinots which was a little bit more premium we actually bought a half bottle a little 375 of which I think when you want to try those more premium wines and you don't want to spend the you know 80 to 90 bucks it takes to actually get your hands on one of those you can get them in a half size but um, we drank that uh, it was very delicious single vineyard Pinot from Yabby Lake in 2021 you know flawless vintage uh, all across the country pretty much and that one was no mistake but what I also love is having a few uh, cellar stuffers where you can just pop this open on maybe maybe it's a Wednesday, maybe it's you know a casual Friday and just like, oh, I just want a bottle of wine, but I don't want to like go into something special. It's always good to have something like that. So this is their Red Claw range, which has got those kind of things in it. So there's those really easy, breezy, drinkable, very, very good things. Sticking with white wines, another uh, fantastic producer out there is Crittenden Estate. So Crittenden are a pretty uh, swanky little winery, to be frank, uh, and they are very, very well situated in that kind of premium end. So their range like this, they're all these little labels, they have an, a little side project uh, called Los Hermanos, which has got a bit of a Spanish influence. They're very, very approachable, but when they're getting down to the estate range, they have some tremendously fine and premium examples of wine there. Mostly specializing in Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, as is true to the region, but they also have their Sauvignon, their Cric de Coeur Sauvignon, which is a uh, very Jura inspired underfloor for several years and you get that kind of classic nutty beautiful wine uh, which we were lucky enough to try a couple of times and it is stunning but it's 90 odd bucks so we didn't end up coming home with that you know times is tough cost of living cozy lives as we're calling here in Australia uh, so we didn't part with that, but we splurged a little bit on this wonderful little bottle of Chardonnay uh, which is their uh, Karangarong which is their kind of like mid-tier Excellent Chardonnay, well handled oak use, really great use of leaves, very nutty, savory, kind of that, you know, richer textural style of Chardonnay, which I really, really appreciate. I love that kind of nutty, leasy take in Chardonnay, which I'm sure you are well aware of after watching the show for many years. Um, but uh, this is a fantastic number. The Pinot Noirs are exceptional as well, but I think the big, you know, North Star in their portfolio is the uh, Cric de Coeur Sauvignon, which is just, if you have the ability to try that wine and buy that wine, I highly recommend it. It is absolutely fantastic. Of course, we tried a lot of Pinot and Chardonnay. That's kind of the majority of what we got. Um, but the best Chardonnay, I think, that we tried on the entire trip uh, was a producer I'd actually not really encountered before, not really run into. They don't have a cellar door. Um, every King's birthday long weekend, they do this big Taste the Mornington uh, tasting event, uh, which we bought tickets for. Uh, and it's got all of the producers pretty much from the Mornington with their own little stands 
showing their wines, selling their wines to take away. And one that I was absolutely enamored with was this producer called Dexter. So this is a bit of a family story. Mm -hmm. They first planted uh, some vines in 1987. Um, so this was set up by the wonderful people Todd and Debbie, uh, who bought a little vineyard in Turong on the Mornington Peninsula and planted a whole bunch of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. They learned their tricks of the trade around the region. The first uh, winery in the Mornington Peninsula, Stonier, who have some amazing wines and have just recently repurchased the winery off a larger company, which is really exciting as well. But Dexter have kind of been honing their trade, but then they've built up their own little profile and have started their own little brand, Dexter. And I have to say, this was the best Chardonnay we tried on the entire trip. I think this one mixed all of the balance of oak and lees and malo fermentation perfectly, and particularly challenging year to kind of balance that on the Mornington Peninsula in 2023. Very cold, very green vintage. So there was a few Chardonnays from the 2023, which had that kind of like very malic taste. And there was a, what I picked up while I was there is that a lot of producers kind of didn't want to go through that full malo thing. I think they've still got maybe a little bit of uh, 90s hangover of like no full bodied buttery oaky Chardonnay whereas these guys I think balanced everything perfectly in this one. This wine was absolutely stellar. Um, definitely a bit of a pretty penny. This is about 60 bucks but honestly for the best Chardonnay on the peninsula it's pretty good value. Uh, some of the wines you know were getting north of $100 in this kind of bracket. We tried most of them and I think this was the best uh, showing wine of the trip. So um, absolutely fantastic stuff. Now, moving on to the reds, we of course picked up a lot of Pinot, but one of the other things that we made sure we wanted to do, and we had to go visit uh, the wonderful Queerly winemakers. Queerly is one of the most important producers on the Mornington Peninsula. Uh, Kathleen Queerly has been building this brand dedicated to alternative varieties, a lot of um, Italian stuff, a lot of like Ribola Gialla, you know, does some really interesting things with Pinot Gris as well, like that real Italian influence. They work with skin contact stuff. They do, you know, some really interesting blends. And this is a really great example of one of the interesting blends. And this is what they are calling uh, Rageous. This is Rageous. So this is a blend of Sangiovese, Pinot Noir and Shiraz. And this is one of my favorite reds that we tried on the trip. It's got that lovely mix of fruit quality, which, you know, Sangiovese has in spades. Also have um, that lovely Pinot Noir uh, and then that beautiful Shiraz in there kind of building that profile of a great mix of fruit forward uh, and tannic structure to the wine. Um, this was just a really great little bistro style red wine. It was cost us about 40 bucks, something like that. Um, but really, really good fun, really good food friendly style uh, and just a great example of that it's just not Pinot Noir and Chardonnay out there, there is a little bit more than that. And despite this having Pinot Noir in it, there is a few more things going on in the Mornington. It's a really exciting little region as well. So, but it's really good to have a producer like Wheelie flying the flag. Now back to a couple of, you know, icons. Uh, one is Muraduk Estate. And this Pinot was one of our favorites from the trip. This is the Robertson Vineyard uh, Pinot Noir from 2022. Another really lovely, cool, modest year. Just fantastic for Pinot Noir making. And this one was just that great fruit forward, bright, beautiful little take on the, the variety, which we really, really enjoy in this house. Those kind of more savory and spicy numbers generally get a bit of a lesser look. Those kind of more fruitier uh, primary styles are what we really, really enjoy drinking here. But this is uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, drinking in a very, very good condition, but this will uh, sell well for the next, you know, five to 10 years, I reckon very, very handily. Decent amount on skins, about like 20 days all up. Um, so there's a bit of structure there, but it, there's no whole bunch in this as well, which I um, kind of appreciative of because there's a lot of whole bunch going around but it still has that bright freshness to it as well definitely needs a decant kind of on opening because it is a bit structured but once that all kind of integrates beautifully absolutely fantastic then uh, another bit of a icon as well uh polpero kind of widely regarded as one of the great pinot producers of the region and of course we picked one up um we went to their cellar door they've got a very very intimate tasting setup very small it's basically one big table and there's probably about like 10 to 12 seats so we were like you know there was two of us 
and there was a couple of other groups and it ended up becoming a bit of an open discussion around the table about wine and you know what they're doing and things like that which was really interesting and fun we tried all the wines and they were absolutely stellar and i think the uh, standout for us was the pinot they had a wonderful chardonnay as well which we picked up too and they've also got some interesting projects outside of victoria as well and outside of mornington as a whole but you know we had to kind of get the estate pinot because it's just it's just something you kind of need to have in your cellar especially if you're going on one of those trips you just got to have something that's a little bit more iconic um, but yeah polpero very very good Lastly, um, this is a producer that we had on the show and we absolutely loved them when we tried them. Uh, this is Kerry Greens and this is their Pinot Noir, which when we uh, had reviewed it on the show, we absolutely frothed it. You guys did too, because you guys cleaned out different drop from their little stash. Excellent, excellent wines and provide really, really good value for the Mornington. And I think that's something we noticed while we were there. The entry price for most wineries is about $40 a bottle. So that was their kind of starting point and they moved up because, you know, it's a very, very premium real estate region. So the land value is up and that kind of is increased into the cost of the wine. That's why all of the wines are re reasonably expensive on that kind of premium end. Kerry Greens kind of sit in that lower end of that. This was a, definitely one of their $40 kind of bottles of Pinot. Um, and it's just fantastic. It's approachable, it's juicy, it's refreshing. But what I really loved about Kerry Greens particularly was their cellar door. It is just a ultimate vibe they've got this one little tasting room with a good little bar you can go up and do a tasting and then you can go out onto their lawn overlooking the vineyard best view in the peninsula from my mind as far as looking over this like great valley with this amazing vineyard and woodlands basically say bring your own picnic taste some wines buy a bottle chill out very family friendly super fun and they were absolutely lovely there at the, the cellar door i believe tom and travis looked after us very very nicely and they were just yeah the very very warming and welcoming environment they look after people really really well so that i think that's definitely a place if you're going to Mornington, you've got to go to this cellar door um i didn't get any footage while i was there i didn't take the camera i was on holiday so i was like eh, whatever but uh, I decided to just do this little rundown because, you know, who doesn't like more wine content? It's always good to uh, put our money where our mouth is. Um, but maybe, you know, I'll explore another region in uh, Victoria sometime soon and take you guys along. We, you know, we've got the Yarra Valley not too far away from home. The Macedon Ranges, we can go to Geelong. We could even head up to Rutherglen and drink some musket if we're really keen on it. So we might explore that a little bit further. But overall, uh, Mornington's a really awesome region and definitely a great place to spend a long weekend. So I um, hope you enjoy.